Hello, my name is Yuan Yang Tang, or you can call me YY. On behalf of my co-authors, I'm presenting Help Supporters, exploring the design space of assistive technologies to support face-to-face -face help between blind and sighted strangers. Imagine that you're a blind person going out in public. Would you wonder where are the people nearby? Who are they? Could they help me? Do they know how to help? Research shows that blind and low vision or BLV people often find it anxious and hesitant about asking other people for help. Now imagine that you're a sighted person that sees a blind person walking down the street. Would you be wondering, should I be doing anything to help? Or should I do nothing? Do they need my help? What kind of help would they need? Sighted people often feel unsure when and how to offer help due to their misunderstanding of BLV people's needs and abilities. Even when the two parties come together, sighted people often find it challenging to describe visual information to blind pe people. Here, the sighted persons throw up their fingers and point over there. However, the blind person apparently cannot see where they are pointing at. And they'll be asking, where do you mean over there? And that can be really confusing and frustrating. Addressing their social and communication challenges, we ask, what is the design space of assistive technology to support face-to-face -face help? In prior work, when a blind person needs some help, they use their smartphone to contact remote assistants. For example, be my eyes. IRA or VizWiz, these remote assistants will connect the blind person to a remote volunteer or trained professional through video calls. Additionally, they could also leverage crowdsourcing or AI image recognition to detect visual information and communicate that to the blind person. However, the volunteers and professionals have to learn how to communicate effectively to the blind person. There has been research in language and semantics to improve effective communication with the blind person. And furthermore, there has been training strategies established to help remote assistants do a better job. We're looking at an in-person space and ask, is there a missed opportunities so many people are in the same environment, they are willing to help. Indeed, a theoretical work has pointed out there are multiple stakeholders at play. The environment, the assistive technology, the people, either they are sighted or blind, they are all in the same ecosystem and they work together in an interdependent manner to make our world more accessible. Another framework called community-based accommodation is that assistive technologies should not only help the people with disabilities to gain access, but it could also help people without disabilities to gain access and to interact with people who, who are disabled. We conducted a research through design process on our team, we have two sighted and two BLV co-designers working together. Through a serious design discussion sessions, we used affinity diagramming to define a series of design attributes. With these attributes, we designed four prototypes called help supporters for two phases. In the connection phase, BLV and sighted stranger need to establish contact with one another. They will identify each other across the space, greet each other, and match their needs. In the collaboration phase, BLV and sighted strangers work together in person. They will need to communicate effectively, respect each other's boundaries, and follow social etiquettes. With these four prototypes, they will represent different approaches to allow us to discover the design space. We conducted a user study to evaluate the four prototypes. The user study was conducted in person on the university campus. We had 20 participants, 10 pairs, 
of BLV and side effects depends to try the prototypes and get their experience. And then we conducted semi-structured interviews to ask them about their experiences. And we took observation notes. Let's look at connection phase first. The first prototype is called Person Finder Glasses. The blind user would wear a Microsoft HoloLens. The HoloLens will allow them to detect surrounding strangers through facial recognition. And the prototype uses audio cues to guide them towards approaching the strangers and stop at a certain distance and greet them by saying hello. Let's watch a short demo. As you can see here, the blind person is scanning around the environment wearing the HoloLens. Now she detects the sighted stranger's face. And the audio cue is guiding her walking towards the sighted stranger. When there's a good distance to say hello, she stops. Now they're saying hello and they have met. This is a two-user peer-to-peer mobile app. First, the surrounding sighted strangers on the platform can input their identity information. And when the blind person needs help, they can open their app, input the type of help they need and the time commitment they will require. And then they can see a list of sighted strangers who are available to help them. And through the information they provided on the platform, the blind and low vision users can choose who they want to send their help request to. After the sighted users have received the request from the blind and low vision user, they can accept the request. After that, the mobile app will guide the sighted user to the blind user to connect with them. Let's see a demo. As you can see, the blind user is getting lost and she needs some help. Now she uses her app to send a help request by inputting the type of help she needs and the time commitment. Then she shows a list of sighted strangers nearby and she's reading through the list and selecting the helpers she wants to send a help request to. As you can see, the sighted helper received the request. She's now approaching the blind user to say hello and connect with her. This prototype is giving the sighted helpers more agency. They are required to be on the platform and take the initiative to accept the request and approach the blind users. Our findings suggest that the volunteer platform is preferred over the person finder glasses because the shared platform allowed both parties, sighted and blind users to share information and thereby reduce social pressures for both. Blind and low vision participants perceive the volunteer platform as a blind and low vision friendly community. And they also find sometimes asking for help from a female user make them feel safe and more comfortable. And BRV participants also look for sighted people who are located nearby, have time, and also have knowledge on how to offer help. Now, let's talk about the second phase, the collaboration phase. The first prototype is called pictorial display. This is a wearable public display screen that's more on the blind person's chest. This phone-sized screen will display messages consist of a Bimoji image and some text. During a collaborating, co collaborative conversation between a sighted and a blind user, the screen will, according to the conversation context, display suggestive messages. For example, if the sighted person pointing their fingers and say over there, the screen will tell them, don't point over there, I don't understand. Therefore, the sighted person will correct themselves to say, oh, it's on your left. Now let's look at the demo. 
as you can see, these two people are in conversation. The blind person on the left wearing a display screen and is changing as the conversation goes by. This is a very public approach. All the information will be viewable by anyone nearby. The second prototype in the collaboration phase is the Vague Directions Flagger. This is a mobile app that's owned by the sighted person alone. And, and the notes is in the sighted person's hand. During the conversation between the sighted person and the blind user, the speech will be translated into transcribed into text and displayed on a notepad. In case of vague and unclear wording, the notepad will highlight those words in yellow. As you see here, the wording of feel is highlighted and the app is suggesting provide an exact measurement when you can. Upon seeing this suggestion, the sighted person corrected to, you can take the path two feet after the entrance. Now let's see a demo. For the two person engaged in conversation, the sighted person is glancing on her phone to see any highlighted words. This approach is very private forward. The information is displayed only to the sighted helper, not to anybody else. We found that sighted helpers often appreciate the visual examples provided on the Bimoji pictorial displays because they can help them better understand what the suggestions are and better follow the guidelines. They really like this particular Bimoji because they wouldn't know what how challenging it is for the blind person to walk straight. Blind person follow an edge of the wall as a reference in order to walk straight forward. And this image helped them to exactly understand, oh, this is what they mean by follow an edge, and they understand it right away. Additionally, sighted helpers are often multitasking. They want to maintain eye contact with the blind user uh, because of social comfort. And then they are also observing the environment in, in order to provide descriptions. At the same time, they are reading the guidelines to improve their communication. So being able to see all three things at the same time is important. Lastly, sighted helpers want to understand how well they are doing. So they want the technology to constantly help them validate their performance and give their suggestions. They also want to keep their mistake private. The pictorial display displays the image to everyone around. And sighted helpers often find that little invasive because they feel like their mistakes are on the display as well. So therefore, they, they prefer the vague direction flaggers, which keep their messages privately on their phone. In conclusion, we designed and evaluated four prototypes for connection and collaboration phases, informing the design space of assistive technology to support face-to-face -face help between BLV and site exchangers. We articulated a theoretical framework, interdependence framework in, in particular, to show how the environment, the BLV and site people in the community, the assistive technology can work together in an interdependent manner. Our findings suggest that in order to build a safe community, we need to balance transparency and privacy through establishing a volunteer platform and provide shared uh, mutual information. Additionally, assistive technology can play a role in providing educational information to the sighted people give them the visual examples so that they can understand better how to help validate their performance during the helping process and keep their mistakes private as they learn and improve. Please read our paper for more information. Thank you.